Hey there, my YouTube friends. I wanted to record this quick-ish uh, tutorial slash breakdown of uh, a project that I did last year or one clip in a project that I did last year using Boris Effects Sapphire Lens Flare to accentuate and enhance the headlights of a kid's off-road toy thingy. I previously did a tutorial using Boris FX Particle Illusion using the built-in Mocha tracking functionality, very much in the same way that I'm going to show you right now. I'll put a link in one of the corners and in the description below. So let's not waste any more of your time and jump right in. So here we are in Adobe Premiere and uh, the footage that the client shot, you can barely tell that the headlight of this off-road vehicle, if I stop it right here, you can kind of, you can barely tell that the headlight is even on. And because this was a very quick and low budget project, uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of time going back and forth between Premiere and After Effects. And yes, I could have used dynamic linking uh, with these shots, but unfortunately dynamic linking doesn't really work as well as it should work. Adobe, I'm looking at you. And because all Sapphire plugins have Mocha built into the effect, I don't have to go back and forth. I can do this right in Premiere. And this works almost identical regardless of your editing host, I think. Don't quote me on that. So here I have this uh, shot playing and I'm actually gonna stop the loop uh, going. And I wanna put a lens flare on each of the headlights. So the, the first thing that we have to do is we actually have to nest the clip. So I'm gonna go up to here, I'm gonna go to nest and I'm gonna nest this clip and we're gonna nest it. And the reason that we do this is to tell Mocha that this is a an isolated clip. So the in points and the out points are, are hard in and hard out. And uh, this will help us in our tracking process. So I'm gonna go up to the effects control, uh, the effects here. I'm gonna go to uh, S lens flare. So I just typed in S underscore lens. L E is what I typed in, but anyway, so we're going to take this lens flare and we are going to pop that onto there and you can see it just pops on right away. Let's go to the effects control for this shot. I just used the default lens flare because I thought it was already pretty perfect for what I needed. Tangent alert. The lens flare plugin is a deep, deep plugin with some amazing presets based on real world lens flares that have been expertly crafted by my good friend and fellow camera nerd, Ben Brownlee and others at Boris FX. And I just know that Ben is gonna be watching this video and is gonna be screaming at me for using all of the default settings. But in this particular case, the client loved it and that's really all that matters. Also, I'm working on a tutorial where I'm gonna go into a deeper dive into the lens flare plugin. We're gonna explore uh, a lot of the presets, a lot of the amazingly crafted presets, uh, as well as the lens flare designer where you can craft and build your own lens flares from scratch. So if that's something that floats your boat, then definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell notification icon to be notified when all future videos drop on this channel. Let's get into this. And since we're using the default lens flare, I'm gonna ignore the load preset, the edit lens uh, buttons and go straight into edit Mocha. So I'm gonna click on that little button and we're gonna bring up Mocha, the Mocha interface here. It opens up to the essentials uh, workspace, which is actually what you need. Um, and as you can see right here, we have pivot and we have hotspot. So the hotspot is actually what I need. A hotspot is gonna be where the actual flare is. Uh, the pivot point is basically going to be like the direction of um, where kind of the flare is facing and all the funny little lens flare bits and bobs, as Ben Brownlee says. Um, but I don't want to uh, track the pivot, so I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to turn off the track. Um, also, too, sometimes the pivot, if you're tracking both, the pivot can interfere um, with the track. And so I'm not going to really worry about that right now. So let's take the hotspot search area and I'm gonna put it right over the headlight and I'm gonna expand this to get, uh, to increase the search area size to give Mocha a little bit more room uh, to breathe, uh, to kind of track on that. I'm gonna put the hotspot right on where I wanna put the lens flare. And I am going to leave translation scale and rotation active because that's what I want. And then I'm just gonna track. I'm gonna track forward. And as you can see, it's doing a really good job of tracking and it's done. That was really quick. Let's go back here and let's track forward or let me, let's track backwards, I guess is what that would be. So let's track backwards and we're done. Boom, good to go. So we're gonna close out of this. We're gonna save, of course. 
And the next thing I need to do is I need to go down to the hotspot uses Mocha and watch right here what happens as soon as I enable this. As soon as I enable that, it sticks right to that track. And if I play, if I hit play, uh, once this caches that shot, you're gonna see that it is stuck right on there and that's all good to go. Now, um, what you could do is you could leave the pivot point um, where it is. And in this particular case, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Um, what I did though, is I did end up animating um, the pivot. So I keyframed this, I put a little keyframe right there. Um, and I'm actually gonna move this out of frame uh, to be about right there. And as you can see, once we hit play, uh, it kind of stays kind of right there out of frame. But I actually kind of want to see a little bit of that little flare come back in. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move. Uh, I'm gonna move if we can actually find where it is. Let's see here. Let's go back to, let's go to 25%, there we go. And I'm gonna move this lens flare up and over a little bit. So it comes in at the end of the shot. And now watch what happens, let's go back to fit. Uh, let's go back to, there we go. And let's hit play on this. And you can see kind of the lens flare, kind of the little bits and bobs, as Ben Brownlee likes to say, uh, come back in to that particular shot. The other thing that I did for this, I actually decreased the scale width to about 250. So it's not as overpowering and it looks a little bit more natural, um, if you uh, if you will. Um, and then I also um, keyframed the rotation as well too. So there gives it a little bit of movement and life in the shot. Um, so we'll go here, let's hit Shift O to go to the end of the shot. And uh, let's uh, let's do about 60 degrees uh, over the life of this shot. And there we go. You can just barely get a little bit of hint of rotation. And that's really it. I just repeated the same process for the other headlight. I added lens flare. I opened up the Mocha tracker. I tracked the headlight. I came back into Premiere. I keyframed the rotation and the pivot. And there's our final shot right there. Just wanted to make something clear. This video isn't sponsored by Boris Effects. They don't have any say in the content or the creation of this video. They're watching it the same time that you're watching it when it gets published onto the site. And while I have an affiliate relationship with them, I've been a Boris Effects user as long as I've been editing and doing motion graphics. So professionally now going on 15 years and something that you can expect on this channel, whether it's a product that has an affiliate link attached to it or not, these are all products that I absolutely love and use and recommend, uh, and not because I'm an affiliate, but because I love them. I genuinely do love them. Uh, you're gonna find some videos on this channel of products that I don't love and that I'm not crazy about, and I'll tell you about those. And I get <laughs> get a lot of hate regarding those things. Get a lot of the fanboys. You can check out the Edelchrome video on that one. Woo, that got heated. And an update on that in another video altogether. The affiliate link is really there to help you save some money on these plugins because I know how expensive all of these plugins can get. And you're actually saving more money than I'm making uh, when you use that code. And other than like liking and subscribing and sharing these videos, the affiliate links really help to offset the cost of making some of these videos um, that I enjoy doing and I wanna do more of. So it really helps out in that regard. So go to the Boris FX website, put Sapphire in your cart and at checkout, use my promo code bmotion-sa, that's for Sapphire. So bmotion-sa to save yourself 15% at checkout. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you get value out of these kinds of videos, definitely hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and I will see all of your gorgeous little faces in the next video. Stay frosty and keep creating. Bye for now. Why did I say that I would see all their gorgeous faces in the next video? I can't actually see their faces, can I? Can I? That would be super creepy up if I could. <laughs> Just saying.